We're all in this together, except some of us are more in it together than others. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is Winnie the Westie, and that intro quote was a humorous variation of George Orwell's classic line from Animal Farm, all animals are created equal, except some animals are more equal than others. And today, our dear Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is rubbing in our faces just which animals are more equal than others. Trudeau tests negative for COVID, exits hotel quarantine in Ottawa after 12 hours. Members of his delegation to Europe who landed in Ottawa around 7 p.m. were tested on arrival and received negative test results the next day at about 8 a.m. Now, for those of you who may not know, Justin Trudeau just returned from Europe from the G7 summit where he was literally bumping elbows with Joe Biden, Boris Johnson, the Queen of England, and others, while quite literally, Maxime Bernier, the leader of the People's Party of Canada, was being arrested in Manitoba. Maxime Bernier was being arrested in Manitoba for violating the public health orders by speaking outside to a group of 20 or 30 people. I kid you not, but we will get there. Let's just get back to this article and how Justin and Trudeau magically found a way to escape his own quarantine hotels. Just a bit of context for those of you who may not be aware, but I suspect anybody watching this vlog already knows because I talked about it. I think it was back in January or February, and I thought it was a joke at the time. Justin Trudeau announced that anybody returning from travel by way of air would need to go to a government-designated quarantine facility until they received negative tests of COVID, and even then, even when released, they would have to quarantine at their own places for up to two weeks. Government-designated quarantine hotels Hotels, which is one heck of a euphemism for prison because I don't care if it happens to be located in a hotel when you are being forcibly detained by the federal government I don't care where it is it is a prison but Justin Trudeau seriously not only announced but also imposed this requirement that people returning from travel by air needed to go to these government quarantine hotels it was challenged in court and a federal court judge who incidentally was appointed under the Trudeau administration found a way in fact and in law to justify this obvious invasion of privacy, violation of constitutional rights, the judge came to the conclusion that the risk that someone comes back and even if they test negative, they can still somehow test positive within two weeks of arrival justifies the forced detention of these people in government quarantine hotels for up to three days. And it's not just that the federal government imposed this requirement requiring people to basically be detained for up to three days, they charged them for the privilege upwards of $2,000 to stay in these government quarantine hotels. So when just Justin Trudeau announced that he was going to travel overseas to Europe to attend the G7 summit where he would be lecturing the world on climate change while having flown there on his own private jet. The question was, is he going to quarantine in one of these government quarantine hotels upon his return? And the obvious answer was no. Why would he do that? He is more equal than others. Justin Trudeau announced that he would not be quarantining in one of these lowly government-run quarantine hotels. He would find his own hotel to quarantine at in Ottawa. And lo and behold, after one evening in the quarantine hotel, he is leaving. Ottawa. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is being allowed to check out from his quarantine hotel roughly 12 hours after checking in. Trudeau's office says he received his negative COVID-19 test Wednesday morning and can now leave the three-star Ottawa lodging. Now, just so no one accuses me of misrepresenting the situation, as far as I understand it, Justin Trudeau is respecting the rules, setting aside whether or not he is staying at a government-designated quarantine facility or whether or not he found a nicer hotel at which to stay himself. Technically, from what I understand, as soon as you got a negative test in one of these quarantine hotels, you could go home to do your two-week quarantine at home. From what I understand, you can go home and do your two-week quarantine at home once you get that negative test. Although, from what I understand, you still need to pay that $2,000 to the government for that quarantine hotel. But Justin Trudeau is just paying for that hotel with our taxpayer dollars in the first place, so no skin off his back. Trudeau was overseas from last Thursday until Tuesday for summits with other G7 NATO and European leaders. His office says Trudeau will follow public health rules and advice for Canadians returning from abroad during the pandemic, as will the officials and journalists who also went overseas. The rules include quarantining for 14 days and taking another COVID-19 test seven days after arrival. Trudeau's overnight stay in a hotel came after his Liberal government had spent months defending the policy of forcing most Canadians returning from international travel to quarantine in a hotel room for up to three days at their own expense. We will see what Justin Trudeau does over the next two weeks or whether he finds another way of circumventing the rules that have been relentlessly and remorselessly imposed on others. But as relates to the hotel itself, guess what a group of experts had to say about that? An expert 
expert review panel recently said the hotel quarantine policy had no scientific basis and recommended the government scrap it. The panel noted travelers who fly to the United States and return across a land border face no such rule. The opposition conservatives have slammed the fact that Ottawa Hotel Trudeau stayed at isn't one of the government approved accommodations. Yeah, opposition conservatives. And I don't even say this as a conservative. I don't consider myself to be a conservative. All that I know is that the conservative opposition can barely be called conservative and can barely be called opposition. <laughs> And while all of this is happening, while Justin Trudeau is off gallivanting with leaders from all over the world in Europe, flying back on his own private jet, Maxime Bernier, the leader of the People's Party of Canada, was literally arrested for speaking to a group of 20 to 30 people outdoors in Manitoba. And he was recently on Tucker Carlson to explain to the rest of the world what exactly is going on in Canada. I mean, from our perspective, if this can happen in Canada, we should be afraid very quickly. Is anyone else in Canada afraid of What's happening? Uh, actually, another uh, candidate from my party was put in jail also in Nova Scotia because he was doing a freedom rally. So it is uh, scary that in Canada right now in 2021, you are like in China. Now, Maxime wasn't exactly given all the time in the world on Tucker Carlson, but such is the nature of mainstream media. But what happened afterwards will really blow your mind. I've just got to read you this tweet and then show you who this tweet is coming from. David. Aiken, here is Maxime Bernier on Fox talking about speaking to his supporters, all four of them. And who is David Aiken, you might be asking yourself? Well, he's not just another blue check mark with a chip on his shoulder. He happens to be the chief political correspondent for Global News. David Aiken, blue check mark, chief political correspondent, Global News. My office is in Ottawa, Canada, but I work wherever. Click link for more bio disclosures. This is Global News chief political correspondent with his 85,000 followers on Twitter, making fun of Maxime Bernier with his 125,000 followers on Twitter for appearing on Tucker Carlson, who has 4.5 million followers on Twitter. Now, I do not give one sweet about the size of one's following on social media. It neither adds nor removes legitimacy from their position. But if you're going to go out and make fun of someone for talking to their four supporters, you better make sure they don't have 40,000 more supporters than you on Twitter. It takes takes a serious amount of lack of insight and self-reflection to make fun of someone for having spoken to their four supporters after appearing on probably the largest television show on television. What? And when I see such a degree of arrogance and condescension, I sometimes feel the need to respond even if I know that I probably shouldn't. And I responded to David Aiken with the following three tweets. Viva Fry at the Viva Fry. There are so many things wrong and undignified with this tweet, David Aiken. First, Maxime Bernier is on Tucker Carlson, three exclamation points in brackets, talking to a bigger audience than you've probably ever had or ever will have, if that matters. And it does seem to matter to you, one of three. Second, there were in fact more than four people there. You are spreading fake news based on a cropped photo in case you don't know better. But yes, they were 20 or 30 people there. This was in Niverville, Manitoba, population 4,083. Are those people insignificant to you? And for those of you who may not know, I have a chronic problem of typos on Twitter. Sometimes they don't work and other times they do work because one of my typos just secured a follow from Tom McDonald in a hilarious exchange. But on to part three of my three-part response to David Aiken. Third, if you thought Maxine Bernier was in fact only speaking to four people, you should find his arrest and detainment even more shocking. Unless you are prepared to live in a Canada where, even according to you, a politician can get arrested for speaking to four people outdoors. So that is the latest absurdity of what is going on in Canada. We are making international news for all of the wrong reasons. We have a two-tiered system in Canada, one for the political elite and one for the regular hoi polloi or political enemies. All all animals are created equal, except some animals are more equal than others. But something tells me that with Maxime Bernier's appearance on Tucker Carlson, with Justin Trudeau being back in the headlines for all the wrong reasons, a lot more people out there are going to know of the absurdities that are going on in Canada, whether it serves as a cautionary tale to others out there, or whether or not Canada actually says enough is enough and starts holding our politicians to account. We will see. But in the meantime, if you like my videos, you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the L.
algorithm. Tina, you fat lard, come get some dinner. If you want to support the channel, all of these support links are in the pinned comment. We've got PayPal, Patreon, subscribe to our YouTube membership. We've got merch. Robert Barnes and I do weekly streams every Sunday. We do weekly streams with a guest every Wednesday called The Sidebar. If you want to support our ventures on Locals, you can find us at beaverbarnslaw.locals.com. All of my content is also on Rumble if you want to watch it there, but more important than any of that, take care of yourselves, check in on friends and family, make sure everyone around you is doing well, and now you know your vlog. Peace out. Bye.